my bladder. Here's my uterus. It's an antiverted uterus. Okay? It's the most common one. Antiverted. Okay? So here's my bladder. Because I'm looking 90 degrees down into the uterus. So I'm not going to be able to evaluate the lower uterine segment. Because it's going to make my endometrium do this. Okay? But as I scan and my bladder is full, it lays my uterus down so I can see it. So that makes the gestational sac, which is inside the endometrium, more visible. Not visible, because I'm, I'm, I'm 90 degrees to the endometrium. Here, I'm 90 degrees to the endometrium, but I'm parallel, perpendicular to the, the scan plane. So it pushes the air away, that's the reason why? Pushes that's another air. reason why. Oh. Okay, because it pushes all of my bowel out of the way, because my bladder is full. It makes my uterus lay down, it pushes everything to the side, because what all do I have down here? Just intestines, okay, just intestines. So those have to be moved out of the way. But, but if I do a transvaginal, I need an empty bladder. Okay, because if I'm doing a transvaginal, if I'm doing a trans, here's my screen. Okay, here's my screen. And my uterus is going to do this, right? Here would be my bladder. Okay, because this is my anterior cul-de-sac, my posterior cul-de-sac, my space of rhesus. Okay, so the fuller my bladder is, the fuller my bladder is, the more my uterus is pushed down. Okay, so when I put in my probe, because I put in my probe here, because this is inferior, right? inferior superior what is this one uh, anterior posterior this is my anterior uterus my posterior uterus so what's going to happen the speed of sound is going to come in I'm not going to be able to evaluate my uterus because the speed of sound is going to speed up is going to hit this interface and what's going to happen posterior enhancement so i can't see it and besides that the bladder takes up most of the screen okay i'm going to see the gestational sac about five weeks. That gestational sac has three names. We call it the gestational sac, an extra embryonic coleum, and a chorionic sac. Okay? Extra embryonic coleum. As sonographers, we say gestational sac. Now, I can't determine if I have an IUP or not. An IUP is what, Sophian? IUP. IUP. You're gonna see it on all of the requisitions. You're gonna write it on every requisition. Intrauterine pregnancy. Okay, extra embryo, uh, IUP. Intrauterine pregnancy, IUP. This is what you're gonna write. Positive IUP. Now, can I call it 
with just my gestational sac. Can I call that an IUP? I can't call it an IUP. I have to see the yolk sac first. That's an IUP. Okay, that's going to be an IUP. Now, when you see that, okay, it's a little bit closer to the wall. You're going to see some cells do this. You're going to have to magnify your images so you can see that you have a heart rate. Okay? We don't use power. We use M mode. We use M mode to get a heart rate. Okay? So when you do that, Here is going to be your screen. Here is going to be your yolk sac. And then you're going to have some bars that run through here. Okay? This is, this is called A mode. A mode. Okay? Now, when I bring my cursor down, that brings it into... M mode, motion mode, okay? I'm going to be able to see a heart rate as it goes like this, okay? You're not going to get this yet, okay? You're not going to get this yet, okay? You're going to get this, and you measure from here to here, and that gives me my heart rate. A heart rate has to be above 120 and below 180. 120 to 180. Okay. When I do a first trimester, it's just like a pelvic exam. The exact same protocol. The only thing is I'm adding a heart rate with M mode, a gestational sac, a yolk sac, and a crown rump length, and a corpus luteum. Thank you for reminding me. I have a question about the crown rump length. It's measuring from the head of the baby to the butt. To the butt. Mm -hmm. But how you can distinguish because when I look at the videos, the shape, I can't tell where is the, which one is the head and which one is the bottom. Okay, the bottom. that's a good question. So here's my baby, and that's about what it looks like. Okay? This is one, this is from like, well, at first it's just going to be this. <laughs> you know, at first. Let's say this is uh, six weeks. Okay? I don't know which is the head and which is the tail. Okay? But at eight weeks, I have a cystic structure that's called the rhombencephalon. It's the hind brain of the fetus. Well, now it's an embryo. Okay? That develops at eight weeks. Don't measure it. Because if you have a first day, first week uh, resident, and you measure it, he's going to measure it as pathology. It's normal development of the fetal brain. It's the hind brain. Okay? The reason that we only measure it up to 13 weeks is because after that, the baby starts stretching and moving and flexing. So we might not get a true measurement. That's why we only do the crown rump length the first trimester. Yes. 
Yes, you'll still see the yolk sac. Okay, so here's my uterus, okay? This is my uterus. Here is my endometrium, okay? I'm not gonna see much of the endometrium, okay? So here is my amniotic sac. The amniotic sac, the amniotic sac is where the baby grows. The chorionic sac is the gestational sac. At 16 weeks, those two sacs are going to fuse. At that point in time, I'll no longer see a yolk sac. Okay? It's the yolk sac that feed, helps feed the baby that first trimester. That's why it's important that we measure it. You said a chorionic sac is a gestational one. It's sac are the same. Okay. But when we measure the yolk sac, not when we measure it, when we need to know the, 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 the gestational, I mean, yeah, gestational age, we only measure from six weeks, we measure on the crown, crown not including the yolk sac, right? The yolk sac is not incorporated in the fetus. There's two different things. The yolk sac is attached to the amnion. The amnion is what protects the baby. The chorion is what protects the amnion. Okay? So let's, let's look at it. So here's my gestational sac, here's my yolk sac, here's my crown rump length. Okay? I have to measure all three of those. I have to measure the gestational sac, I have to measure the yolk sac, I have to measure the crown rump length, plus a heart rate. Okay? So now my baby is bigger. I don't want to get it wrong. Okay. Okay, now my baby is bigger. My yolk sac, my amniotic sac, my chorionic sac, my crown rump length, the yolk stalk. Yolk stalk. I still don't have an umbilical cord yet. It's the yolk sac that is giving the nutrients to the baby. Okay? Now. My gestational sac. My baby. Okay, so how many weeks is the baby? What? Eight weeks. How do I know it's eight weeks? The rhombencephalon. It's the hind brain. It's the first thing that we see in the fetus to tell us what's the head and what's the tail. Okay? So what do I have to do? I have to measure the gestational sac. This is the gestational sac. This is the amniotic sac. Here's the three vessel cord. Here's the embryo. Here's the amniotic sac, the chorionic sac. Got it? And my crown rump length. 
In the longest plank. You don't take a transverse. You do three of these. You lift up your hand, you find it again. The longest measurement is your crown rump length. Okay? So the session set, I mean, it's the set. After that, your set. The last one. Yeah, the gestational sac, okay. the amniotic sac. The, the cord is starting to develop. I still can't evaluate it yet because there's not enough Horton's jelly to protect it yet. It's too, still too young. The amniotic sac has the baby in it. Okay. Crown rump length. 